Hey, what's going on? So the hype for Fossil Island has been building up for months, and now that it's finally been released, we gotta find something new to get hyped about. So today, I want to talk about RuneScape Mobile, which is coming out before the end of the year. I want to give my thoughts and opinions on it, and talk about some of the pros and cons of having the game as a mobile application, as well as what you can do to prepare for it. And I'm just gonna be slaying in the game, so there's really nothing to watch. You can just listen to this in the background of whatever you're doing. The first topic I want to go over is the huge amount of players that will be attracted to the game. It's been confirmed that it will be available on iPhone and Android, which means nearly every person with a smartphone will have access to RuneScape. I really believe that just due to the nature of the game, it will hit the top of the charts within a couple days and stay there for a pretty long time. I know you all have those friends that when you tell them you play RuneScape, they always say, oh yeah, I tried that in third grade back in 2005. Well, a lot of people who see the game are going to remember when they played RuneScape as a kid for a year or whatever it was, and probably download it just to try it out of curiosity or for the nostalgia to bring back those memories from childhood. Now, with potentially tens of thousands of new players, this will bring some good things and some bad things. So one of the best things about this, of course, is building a larger player base in general is good because the company will make more money from advertisers, and more people will be paying for membership and bonds and whatnot, and that'll give Jagex more money to upgrade their servers, hire devs, create new content, stuff like that. It's also good because you'll have more people to play with. Most people, when they first play RuneScape, don't care or even know about efficiency and just want to explore and have fun. So you may find more people at the Games Room, Castle Wars, Clan Wars, and a lot of other seemingly XP-wasting dead content type of activities. There will also be more people to compete with on the high scores, which may be a good or bad thing to some people, because on one hand it inspires you to grind harder and get out of your comfort zone in the game, but on the other hand you might lose some of your ranks that you've been trying so hard for. I can 99% guarantee you that with the release of mobile, Jagex will release a lot of free-to-play servers that same day, and I'm about 50% certain that they won't release enough servers and have to put up even more throughout the week. Now let's get into some of the bad things about larger player base. First off, there will be more competition for resources, especially in free-to-play worlds. Although I don't think there will be a huge spike in bots, just more actual players. There will most likely be drastic changes in the market, especially for free-to-play items. I'm no market genius or flipper or anything, so I can't guarantee any predictions, but I think a lot of the incoming players will be cutting willows and yews, which will lower the price by a lot. And a lot of the new players will probably be buying maple logs for fire making, so they may go up. And this is just one very specific example of a free-to-play skill affecting everyone. And you know, when prices of logs change, that affects other skills like fletching, which then affects alking and magic, and it just always becomes a huge, unpredictable, messy chain of events. Having more players in the game may also be good for gold farmers and cause their sites to thrive more, which is unfortunately another downside of having an influx of players join the game. Since we're finishing up the topic of free-to-play, I want to start breaking into the next topic of things that need to be worked on before mobile comes out. With all the new players, they're going to be doing all the newbie training methods like cutting oaks and willows and mining tin, copper, and iron, and trying to kill chickens and cows, but what do you think is going to be frustrating them? If I had to take a wild guess, I'd say that it's their willow trees that keep getting cut down in two ticks because there's like 17 people surrounding it named xq 3 elverg 67 I promise you, I'm not exaggerating. I've spent a lot of time in free-to-play, and playing in free-to-play is tough and extremely competitive. And if there's 20 bots competing over the same iron rock, I'd be annoyed too and probably quit the game. I wish I had a solution for bots, but I really don't think they can ever truly go away. I'm not a programmer, so I have no clue about how tough it is to detect bots, but I really hope Jagex is able to do something about them and minimize the amount as much as possible so all the new players actually want to stay in the game. It really does promote a sense of community when everyone cutting trees is chatting with each other rather than always getting the cold shoulder from a bunch of bots. Okay, next thing that should probably get fixed is fletching, and more specifically is attaching feathers to bolt tips. I know it's possible to play RuneScape with the touchscreen at the moment, but it's not really that widespread. I mean, you literally just have to tap back and forth on your screen, and you can get 99 fletching within a couple hours. Like, I'll do it on my phone right here, listen. I mean, that sounds pretty OP, doesn't it? And with broad bolts, you get 30 XP drops multiple times per tick, and you normally break even or even profit a little bit with it. A lot of people might dislike this idea, but it would probably be in the best interest of the game to change it to the make 10 sets option so you can't get 200 mil XP for free 
in the same amount of time that it should take to get 99 fletching. Alright, now let's get into some of the potential issues that may come with the release of mobile. I expect Jagex will be closely monitoring the game for bugs for the first few days. In the past with RuneScape, there have been many updates which have led to bugs and glitches, which if it happens, will definitely get abused. The biggest ones that pop right into my head is the Purple Party Hat Dupe in RuneScape Classic, uh, the Faldor Massacre, the Dungeoneering Runecrafting glitch, but there's been plenty of others. Some of the effects of this bug abusing has led to bans and rollbacks, which I'm sure no one wants. As long as Jagex stays on top of everything, I'm sure everything will be okay, but again, there is always that chance. Another potential issue that has a lot of people concerned is Jagex making more content specifically targeted for mobile users. This would be training methods that are less click intensive and more AFK. The concern is that as they create more content, they'll be forced to take mobile users into consideration, which could possibly affect the updates. I totally agree with this concern, and in my opinion, if someone chooses to play mobile, you gotta know you aren't truly playing the original format of the game, and some skills, such as runecrafting for example, just may not be as efficient or feasible when you adapt to that kind of gameplay. I'm really not too concerned about that though, and I doubt Jagex would actually change projected updates based on mobile gameplay. Okay, now let's talk about how to take advantage of RuneScape Mobile and why it's such a good thing. The biggest thing that I'm most excited for, which may surprise you, is exercise. I can go for walks around outside and not waste any XP. If my phone was waterproof, I could go swimming and gain XP. Seriously, I could probably walk around my city for hours without getting bored once this comes out. It could potentially be a great way to stay in shape, and I would encourage every single one of you to walk laps around your block while playing the game. Or if you live in a bad neighborhood or the weather isn't great, walk laps around in your house or apartment. It's also convenient because most phones have built-in trackers and you may be surprised at how many steps you took and how many miles or kilometers you walked. Next awesome thing about old school RuneScape is use it on the bus or the train. If you take public transportation, this would be a great way to avoid that awkward eye contact with the person sitting across from you, and you never know if the person sitting next to you plays RuneScape as well, so if they glance over and see it, you might just make a new friend. The next benefit is if you play multiple accounts. So some computers might not be able to handle all that work, or maybe your screen is too cramped and you don't want to invest in a second monitor. Now you'll have your phone right next to you, so you'll be able to play your alt, or Iron Man, or pure, or whatever second account that you have. Another benefit is, say you don't have a computer or Wi-Fi for some reason. Maybe your computer got the blue screen of death, or maybe it got stolen, or maybe you're moving and you won't be setting up Wi-Fi for a week. Well, with mobile access, you won't have to start getting those RuneScape withdrawals, and I'm sure a lot of you know exactly what I'm talking about. Same deal if you're going on a road trip, instead of just staring out the window, now you can spend those 8 hours playing RuneScape. And yes, I'm talking about only if you're a passenger, which this actually leads me to the next point of discussion, things not to do with RuneScape Mobile. I really beg you to please, please not play mobile if you're driving. There's nothing I can do or say to prevent it though. I know there's going to be a news headline about someone crashing and potentially dying from trying to play this game and drive. I understand XP is important, but I promise you it's not worth it to play it while driving and it can wait. You never think it's going to happen to you until it's already said and done. No one wants to be that person, but that person could very well easily be you. So please just don't risk it. Just don't do it, man. The next thing to avoid is using RuneScape Mobile in class. I feel like most of the old school player base are people who originally started playing in elementary school like over a decade ago, and there's probably a 90% chance that you, watching this video right now, are between the ages of 18 and 24. So a lot of you might be in college, and you are paying big money for your classes, at least if you're American. Don't just throw your money down the drain. I know you can AFK cutting redwoods or fishing, but it's very easy to get distracted, whether it's from your friends, your clan chat, or even with the public chat. Save it for after class and focus 100% on what's going on right then and there. Even if you're in high school, don't get your phone taken away for RuneScape. That sucks and you won't be able to get XP during lunch then. Another time you probably don't want to be playing mobile is if you're walking home on a dark street past midnight and you know it may not be the best area. I shouldn't have to tell you this, but keep your phone in your pockets and don't flash around any valuables because you never know who may be lurking and waiting to PK you for your phone. Let's move on to the next topic, which is what can you do to prepare and get ready for the release of RuneScape Mobile. My biggest recommendation is to get a portable charger slash battery pack. The brand I have is called Anker, it's spelled A-N-K-E-R, and I read amazing reviews about them and they are very fairly priced. Mine was like 40 bucks and it holds like 8 to 10 charges for my phone. It's very lightweight, it's like less than a pound, and you could even get smaller ones for cheaper. 
They do take a long time to charge from empty, so whenever it starts to get low, I just plug mine in overnight and it's ready by the morning. I'm somewhat ashamed to admit, but I got mine when Pokemon Go first came out, but even besides that, I've used it in so many situations. It's helped me on airplanes, road trips, day trips walking around downtown, when going hiking or camping, and there's so many other uses for it. And you can charge anything with it as long as you have a USB adapter. I've charged my phone the most, but I've also used it to charge my laptop and cameras. Alright, the next way to prepare for mobile is to make your in-game investments now. Whether it's logs, ores, runes, bonds, go stockpile whatever you think is going to rise and sell your item stacks that you think may be crashing, and the sooner you do this, the better. It's almost like playing the stock market in a way. You can use your knowledge to predict what's going to happen and make investments based off of that, but there's no actual way to predict how certain items are going to react to this update. You may have a lot of questions, and I'm sure most of them have been answered in the forum post, which I will link in the description. If you don't trust my link, feel free to Google OSRS Mobile Frequently Asked Questions, and the first thing that comes up will be the official forum thread. But I will try to answer what I think are some of the most commonly asked questions right now. First off, is the app free? Yes, it will be completely free. Will there be microtransactions as a result of this update? No, there won't. Next question is, does it use up a lot of data? No, it should be very minimal usage, and I like to think about it this way. The game was made in the early 2000s for Windows XP computers with dial-up AOL internet. Even if you have an older smartphone, I'm sure it's way ahead of any of those dinosaur computers. How big is the app? It's a 2 megabyte download, and with everything, including the cache, it will be less than 50 megabytes. How is the battery usage? Jagex said, and I quote, <clears throat> Shouldn't be too bad. Alright, moving on to the last question is how long will it take Wooks to beat the Inferno on mobile? Less than 24 hours. So that's about it. Let's wrap up the video now. Overall, try not to overthink it, even though I just made a 12 minute video thinking about it. But we're going to be able to play RuneScape on our phones, which is going to be awesome. This is what we've been waiting for since we were kids, so take some time to just appreciate the technology. Again, once it comes out, please, please, please be safe when you play, and don't drive at the same time. I promise you, it is not worth it. I want to thank you for sticking all the way through the video. I wanted to put out my perspective, covering a lot of the topics surrounding the future release of mobile this winter. I hope I was able to help you out, and if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, and if you want to see more, feel free to subscribe. It really would mean a lot. Anyways, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.